Hey guys, Chris here and welcome back to the Amazon Vlogs. Today I'm gonna give you a tour of what the step van looks like, why all Amazon drivers should drive the step van, and what you need to apply to drive one. First things first, why the f is it called a step van? It's obviously a truck. I don't know why they would call it a van. So in this video, if I refer it to as a truck, you guys know why. Also check out my video where I did a tour of the FedEx truck. They're very similar in some ways and very different in others. So let's go check it out. Cold, 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 cold. Start by going from the passenger seat. As you can see, the sliding doors, just like the FedEx. Slide in, slide out. Here's the passenger seat. Anytime you have a helper, boom, right there. Seat for them. Orange seat belts, nice touch. And the first aid kit is right above the passenger seat. And here's the windows. If you want to open it, all you got to do is press together and they open just like that. But it's like 35 degrees today, so we're going to leave it closed. And then here is the main work area right here. As you can see, it's very clean, like 17,000 miles on it. And it's looking really nice. This is the work area. You'll probably be here for eight to 10 hours. So make sure you get comfy. You can see there are two cabinets up here. If you want to put your stuff here, just make it safe. Here's another first aid kit, some papers, and more documents and papers. And this is the book it comes with right here. As you can see, this one's a Ford model. And I believe it's like a 2020, 2021, because the one I had at FedEx looks very similar to this. Here on the right side, you got a shelf. Here, if you have any papers, you can clip them on like right there. Here's my badge. And below that is all the tools. If your truck breaks down, you can see like the safety light, machiggy things to put on the road if your truck breaks down. Here in the middle, you have a nice two cup holders on the left and right side. You got a little cupboard down here. See, I'm keeping my sandwich right there. And then you got this smaller hole, so you can put maybe, I don't know, your keys, your wallet. And this is the driver's seat. You see on the right side, there's a trash can, which is very convenient. I really like that. And then you can move your seat forward, backwards with this. And then you can tilt it forward and backwards with these buttons. One thing I noticed on my first day in the step van that there is no radio. In the FedEx truck, it would have been up here, or there's a single din radio down here, but obviously it is replaced. There's a USB and then there's a light that tells you if the back door is open. There's two ways you can start her up. There's the old fashioned way with the key. The second way is clicking this button, but this truck, I think the key fob is dead. So hopefully I can show you in this clip. All right, this is the second way you can start the engine. All you gotta do is press this button and it has a little circle thing on it. And then you can see these two buttons light up. You gotta press the engine start button once, start it up and press it again to start the engine. That way, the keys are in your hands, and all you gotta do to stop the truck is press this button. Or this button. Oh my gosh, and the door opened too. So we're gonna put the key there, turn it, and boom. Look at that. We need an oil change. Ford, it's pretty loud. Clearance height is 10 feet and 10 inches. And the dash looks really nice. You can see it kind of fell Okay, that was me. I was just driving down the road and the dashboard just fell like that. I don't know why, I can't put it back up. But it's a really nice dashboard. You can see in the middle it's digital and then you have your gauges on the left and right. On the left side, you've got your hazard lights right here. Turn them on and off. And your lane assist. The lane assist is automatically turned on when you start driving the truck. It's nice, it just beeps every time you're out of the lane. Here you can turn traction control off, but we always keep it on and all your headlight settings and what is this? Oh, this is just to dim the dashboard. So it could be brighter or you keep it high. The buttons on the dash, just control the middle screen as you can see right here. They have a lot of different options. I'm recording our trip right now. So far we've driven for about three and a half hours and 27 miles. But usually you'll just keep it on um, the speedometer. It's important when you drive on the highway because you don't want to go over the speed limit or you'll get docked for it at Amazon. And you can just see I'm going through lane assist, pre-collision, all the fancy stuff that newer cars have these days. On the right side, we got the gear shifter. I really like this gear shifter. 
but it's just a little tad too far. I'm six foot and it's hard to reach. I know I could bring my seat closer, but then there's little space between me and the steering wheel because the steering wheel is huge. Here we have the dome lamp uh, to turn it on, as you see, turned on. Here's the fans. We don't have just one fan. We have two fans. You got the low and then you got the high, <sighs> but it's cold. It's freezing in here. And then we got the spotlight for the back. I believe it's the back. We can turn it off, I think. I think that was off. Right next to it, we got USB ports. You need to charge your phone. You need to charge the scanner. It's right here. And on the bottom right here is to control all your air, your heat. Uh, does this have AC? Let me see. It does not feel like it's getting cold. Maybe because it's cold outside, but that might be a factor why it's not getting cold. And right here on the right side is my backup camera. It has like a bird's eye view. And it also has sensors down here somewhere. So if you get close, it'll start beeping. And on the right side, you have the top view. You can see this is the top of the truck. And on each side of the truck, there are cameras. So that's how it gives you that view. Really nice. Haven't used it yet. I'm old school. I just use my mirrors. Oh yeah, can't forget the parking brake. So that right now down, it's disengaged. But if you pull it up, <coughs> it turns it on. As you can see, the brake like on the right. Now to the back. So to open the door, you twist the key and push the door a little to the left. And then it should just slide over the back, which is really cool. Yeah, and to close it, all you got to do is pull this little wire right here, lift it up, and then you can close it like that. And this seatbelt thing right here is what automatically makes it open. So if I let go, it opens. FedEx trucks don't have these, but you have this little pole thing right here to keep all your stuff. Here's my backpack. And it's nice to have just like right there, right behind me. And here's what my truck's looking like. We're halfway done for the day. Uh, we just got to do this side of totes, and these totes are open empty. You can see I can just throw empty totes anywhere I want because there's just so much space. It's super nice. All my overflow just stays in the back like this and you can just walk back here and find it. In the cargo vans you have to like dig through them because just there's just limited space but here so much space. Also on the back the shelves open and close so right here you can see it's down but if you want to lift them up you can lift them up. So if you have really big packages, you can go put them in the back. The door is actually really heavy. I think it weighs around 285 pounds. And what helps is this little string right here. Where is it? This string right here helps it so you can lift it. And here are two buttons you could unlock. And then there's a the spotlight. Oh, as you can see, this button goes for this. You can see this rope is attached to the door and all you gotta do is pull it down and close it like that. Hey guys, Future Chris here. I totally forgot, how can I not mention the cameras? I talk about them more on my cargo van video, but I guess I can add some more stuff. There are four cameras. There's one in the front, one in the back, two on the sides, and there's also two buttons. On the right side, you can turn off the front facing recording because it's always recording when these two lights are on. But when you hold it down for five seconds and press this button, the button, it turns it off. But the front still records, just in case something happens. This is anytime you go on a break for lunch, you don't want the cameras recording you. You can click that and it'll only record the front. And the second button here, right this one, on the left side, is if you want to record a moment, say that there's a crazy guy, he punched you while you're driving or drew a package at you, and you want to save that moment, you can hold this for five seconds and then this light will turn blue instead. If you're an Amazon driver right now thinking of driving the step van and currently drive the cargo van, just do it. Your quality of life will increase significantly. Why? They're just so fun to drive and you have so much room. Once you drive the step van, you'll never want to go back to the cargo vans. The only cons of the step van is the size. As you can see, these step fans are much bigger than the cargo vans. Maybe you're not comfortable driving around a big truck. And number two, the workload. Since the truck is much bigger, that means you're probably gonna be carrying more packages, meaning you'll probably get more work. But when you drive this step van, most DSPs will give you a dollar raise. For me, the pros outweigh the cons. More space, better organization, and most importantly, Lots of fun. There are some Amazon drivers that are saying they're better than the Rivian vans. Rivian, please send my DSP some electric vans. I love to see them. As many of you guys know, I was a FedEx driver in the past. 
And when I started at Amazon, I thought I could just jump right in to the step bands. This wasn't the case because you actually had to go to a third party to get approved to drive one. So maybe it took like a month and a half before I could start driving one. But to be eligible to drive one, you need to be DOT certified. Essentially, you take a physical test, making sure that you can drive a commercial vehicle. They just check your vision, your health, your weight. Just ask your DSP and they probably will send you to a place to get tested. Once that happens, your DSP is going to send you an application for the step band. This is where it goes to a third party called JJ Keller. Then you take some online classes like you did in orientation about safety and how to drive one. It's probably going to take you like four hours minimum. It's, it takes a very long time to uh, go through all the videos. And after that, you go on on-site training with JJ Keller. It was pretty much two days just doing maneuvers, doing the serpentine, driving between colons and driving in reverse, and backing up in a 45 degree angle, all that fun stuff. Since I was a FedEx driver, I already knew how to do all this. So I was pretty much chilling and I was just there for pretty much free lunch. It was kind of cool to see other Amazon drivers in different stations and different parts of Jersey that you would never meet beforehand. So unfortunately for me, even with my training and my experience, I still had to go through the training. And that's how you become a certified lover boy. I mean, certified step fan driver. And they even give you certificates. Check it out guys. I'm certified baby. But these don't really mean shit. If you're not in the system, you're fucked. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you learned something new. That's it for me. If you learned anything of value, make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.